Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to be talking about single parent romances. So I am a fan of single parent romances when the kids are involved. I can't stand when in books they mention that they have a kid and then the kid is like never there. Like I don't, it's like just used and a lot of the times in those types of romances when they're like mentioned but like are rarely ever there the kid is often used as a plot device for um, the conflict later on and that always really bothers me but when a kid or multiple children are introduced in the story and are used as characters in the story and are important to the story I always really like it um, and I love ones where they are old enough to have their own personalities, I guess, and like old enough to be fun and enjoyable for the story. So I have quite a few to recommend to you today and we're just gonna get right into them. So the first one that I'm going to mention is Wraith by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is a interracial romance with a woman who is um, a divorced mother of twins and she's also a doctor and so she is often times busy and she needs help and Wraith is a very large tattooed man who is not what most people would look at and think nanny but he's incredibly good with kids and he has been a nanny for a while and decides that he's like I really want to do something different he loved being a nanny but he's like it's time to do something different but he gets an emergency call from somebody that he knows really well who he's worked with as a nanny and the um person is like hey I know this woman who just recently got divorced has twin girls and really really needs help and it'll be like a temporary situation while she finds more permanent help and Rafe being a really nice guy is like okay it's temporary sounds good I will help her out and he goes and he meets her and Rafe becomes the nanny for these two twin girls um and the mother's name is Sloane um, and one thing that I really really love about this book is that when they're doing like their interview or everything Rafe is so open and like honest about what he thinks and everything and so he gets there and they're doing the interview and they're just like chat talking and getting to know each other um, a bit because he's gonna watch her children and he is like looks at her and he's like I need you to know before you hire me before I like move into your house because this is gonna be like a live-in nanny he's like before I move into your house that I find you incredibly attractive and Sloane appreciates his honesty and is like good to know um and I really loved that there was no secrets or um like anything like hidden it was very open and honest and I think for a mother for somebody who's recently been divorced and who um, is now a single mother who has a lot on her plate, that honesty and that um, openness before this man moves into her house was really, really good for her. And it really, um, the two of them work really well together. There are so many scenes of Rafe with the kids in this and I loved the two little twin girls. They were so cute. Um, and I would totally, totally recommend this book. I really need to read more from Rebecca Weatherspoon because I really love this book and this duet in general. Then the next one that I have is The Takeover by T.L. Swan. I couldn't mention a single parent romances without talking about, I always forget her name. I always think it's Kate. Is it Kate? Claire. Claire. I always say Kate. It's Claire. So Claire is actually a widow and she has three sons um one of whom is like a teen he's like 16 or 17 he's like a grown teenager um and then the youngest is quite young i think he's like six so this book follows claire who is a widowed single mother of three boys who works as the ceo of her deceased husband's 
company. Her husband had this company in his family and she's been running it since he died and it's dying. It's on its last legs and Tristan um, is the hero and he works for Miles Media as the acquisitions type person where he takes over and buys out dead and dying companies um, to either build them back up and then sell them off again or to take them over and make them part of Miles Media. And so he goes to Claire and he offers her to buy her company for a very generous amount and Claire's like, fuck you, this is my husband's company, I am not selling it. And she's incredibly offended and she's like, absolutely fucking not, get out of here. But they're incredibly attracted to each other, they're both really hot and they're like looking at each other and they're attracted. But Claire is so mad at him and she's like, I can't even look at you. So she has a lot on her plate and her friend says, Claire, you really need to like have some time to relax. And so Claire goes to France to a business convention where she, it's like this convention where you can like learn more about the business world and make connections and stuff. And they have like panels and everything. Well, one of the panelists happens to be Tristan and her and uh, Claire and Tristan end up having a sort of fling in France um, and then she's like well when it ends when we go back to New York this ends I can't be with you anymore and they get back to New York and Tristan's like fuck no I need her still and he goes to her house where her kids are and her kids are not happy and I loved it. It was so so good. The three boys make, play such a large role in this book and they make it so enjoyable because they, when Tristan is having to gain the trust of Claire and building a relationship with Claire, he also has to build that same relationship with the sons because they can't stand him at first. They're like, you are not our dad, you are not right for our mom, get out. And they go from having that thought to to really loving Tristan and I loved how their relationship developed not just between Tristan and Claire but between him and the kids and the way Claire learned to trust Tristan with her kids and it was just so so good I absolutely loved it and the middle child I'm a middle child and I felt real strong middle child energy from the middle boy in this who is just like angry and upset and just like secretly broken and I loved it. <laughs> so so good. One of the best single parent romances that I've read. Then the next one that I have is Surrender and Dominate by Amy Dawes. This is book two. I don't own book one um, so I grabbed book two but Surrender is the first one and this is Gareth Harris's story from the Harris Brothers. It is the last Harris Brothers story and this one um, follows Salone. Uh, who is a recently divorced woman with a, I think her daughter is like nine or ten maybe. Um, and so her husband, Sloane's husband, is an asshole. And she, he, uh, Sloane and him honestly never really should have gotten married. Like they were dating and I think they got pregnant so they got married and then they stayed together because the daughter ended up having cancer so trigger warning for a child with cancer in this she does survive but um Sloane is very traumatized by dealing with her daughter's cancer recovery and she's very overprotective of her daughter for, I mean for re good reason I, but she's so afraid of her daughter getting hurt or being injured or like having the cancer come back that she's very very overprotective of her daughter and so when her husband cheats on her and then is like yo goodbye I'm divorcing you she stays in England even though she's American um because she refuses to leave her daughter and she has to struggle so much with the fact that she's not with her daughter every minute now because she has shared custody with her husband and Sloan who is so used to being so in like out of control with everything. Nothing is under her control. Her husband and her daughter are so in control of her life. She doesn't have really any control over anything. She really, really needs control. And Gareth is the opposite. Gareth has so much control in all of his life. He refuses to let himself be vulnerable. And so they develop this understanding with each other where they're kind of like friends with benefits, where they 
uh, in bedroom situations, Sloan becomes the dominant one in control and Gareth gets the opportunity to surrender that vulnerability that he really needs. Um, and they have develop a romance. Um, the book one does end on a cliffhanger so just be aware of that. Um, the duet itself has an HEA but the HEA doesn't come until this one. Um, trigger warnings for like I said child with cancer but also loss of a loved one. Gareth is really really dealing with the death of his mother from when he was younger. He never got over it and he was very close to his mother and his father didn't deal with it well and had became sort of abusive-ish um and so there's a lot of trauma in this duet but I would totally totally recommend it it is incredibly good then the next one that I'm going to mention is one that I read recently that I absolutely loved and that is All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata this one is like Mar on a, like all of Mariana Zapata books it is a slow burn um, romance between a woman who sh she needs to get away and she had her relationship this person that she was in a relationship with for a very very long time like 15 years recently did something very bad like I don't want to spoil it because um but they, they are no longer together. She leaves and she needs to get away and she goes back to a place where she um, and her mother lived when they when she was younger. Um, her mother, when she was younger, when they were living in this place, I think it's Colorado, um, they, uh, the mother went out on a hike and never came back and they never knew what happened to her. And so uh, the heroine um, really wants to be reconnected with her childhood, with her mother, and so she goes back to this town and she rents a apartment that's like over a garage from a man and she gets there and she goes to check into the apartment, like unlock the apartment with the place where the key, uh, where she'd been communicating with this person um, and she paid like upfront for a couple of months and she gets there and this guy comes in with like a, a shotgun or something and is like what are you doing breaking into my house and she's like I'm not breaking into your house I rented this apartment and he didn't rent her the apartment his son did um, and she's like I, I paid for it like I really need a place to stay I really need to be here and he really um, doesn't want her to be but he allows her to um, her name is Aurora um, and I can't remember what his name is Rhodes his name is Rhodes and Mariana Zapata his name's in the title like always um, his name is Rhodes um, but Aurora and him um, First, Rhodes is very, he's very grumpy. It's a very grumpy sunshine romance and he's very grumpy um, and he doesn't want her anywhere near the house. He's like, don't come anywhere near the house. Don't talk to me or my son. You can stay in this garage, but you will be quiet and you will not interrupt us. And so she's like, thank you, absolutely. And she really settles into her small town life. Um, the single parent aspect of this romance is so good because the son is a teenager. He's a grown teenager. He's in high school and he has his own personality. He has his own, he's so, like he's an actual like main character in the story and I loved it. And he's even the really um, like catalyst for them for Rhodes and Aurora actually beginning to develop a friendship because he is not feeling well, like visibly not feeling well one day. When Aurora comes home, she can see him. He's sitting on his on his porch or something and he's visibly looks ill. And Aurora goes over to him and she's like, despite the fact he's like she she's like, despite the fact that I could get kicked out, that I could um be thrown out of this apartment and I wouldn't have a place to live. She's like, I need to help him in case he's ill, in case he really is sick. Um, and so she goes over and she um, ends up taking him to the hospital because he's incredibly unwell. Uh, and that is the first 
time that roads really softens to her. He becomes much more willing to work with her and develop a relationship with her, a friendship with her, um, because of this kindness that she shows his son. And the son is a huge part in the whole thing and I absolutely loved this romance. It's definitely one of my like top Mariana Zapatas. It was the um, secret like because it's slow burn like most Mariana Zapata, I will say it's a little like less slow burn than like say like the Wall of Winnipeg um which is like they don't get together until like the last fucking chapter. This one is a little less slow burn but it's still has all of those nice gooey like slow burn feelings that you have when you're reading a Mariana Zapata which I absolutely loved. Okay I have another one but I don't know if I should include it because this video might be long. We'll include it. Um, last one that I'm going to talk about is Spotlight by Eden Finley. This is an MM romance um, but Ryder is a single parent. He and his childhood best friend um, who is a woman got drunk one time and had sex. Um, now they have a baby. Um, but the mother is in the military and so Ryder has full custody of his little daughter Kaylee. I think Kaylee's like four. She's quite young. Um, and Ryder used to be in a boy band um, but the boy band broke up and now he's in entirely dedicated to his daughter. He's like I, I don't want anything to happen to her because of the paparazzi because he's a famous guy um and so he tries his absolute best to keep her out of the spotlight and keep her out of the public eye but he's struggling um, he really doesn't want to need help but he really needs help and so he meets this guy named lyric who he went to college for like um early childhood education he's qualified to work with younger kids and he did that kind of as a backup because because he wants to be a famous singer and um when he sees that Ryder really needs help Ryder he offers him an exorbitant amount of money in order to be his nanny and so Ryder and uh so Lyric basically moves in um and becomes Kaylee the daughter's nanny um and Ryder and Lyric are incredibly attracted to each other but Ryder doesn't want to go there because she, he needs help with his daughter and he's like she's more important than my feelings and so it's really really cute um they end up working on music together and they end up um ra lyric becomes very close with kaylee and it's really adorable and i love one thing i really love about this romance is that when the mother comes back into the picture like Ryder and the mother never loved each other um but when the mother comes back into the picture, it's not as a conflict or any sort of thing. It's very much like she's just like a third parent um, and she is just there and she has no problem with Ryder and Lyric and I really really loved that aspect of unconvention unconventional parenting. I just really enjoyed it um, and I thought the three of them worked together as parents really well but it is not polyamorous at all. <laughs> Uh, but I really loved Ryder um, and Kaylee and Lyric's relationship dynamic, just the three of them also, um, because Kaylee does play a very, very large role in this book because uh, Ryder does not want to do anything that'll put his daughter in any sort of jeopardy and it is fantastic. Okay, that is it. That's all of the ones that I was going to recommend in this video. I hope that this is not too long. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you can see me in my next video and comment down below if you have any recommendations for me. But that's it. So I hope you have a great day. Bye!